of the city of Bestfield, and I'm also a 1980 graduate. Don't do the math back there. I see you calculating of uh, Westfield High School, where once a bomber, always a bomber. There you go. Um, there's so many guests here that I'd like to introduce, but I'm only going to introduce one today, and that's Secretary Patrick Tubwiler, Secretary of Education for the state of Massachusetts. Patrick. who are attending Westfield State. Uh, we had the opportunity to hear about their experiences, what they've learned, what's been demystified from the, for them about the college experience, um, and what they've learned about themselves uh, as learners, their path forward. And that, for me, is what this is all about. Right? That, for me, is energizing. It, is, it just has me floating right now. Um, it is wonderful to be here in company with uh, so many uh, allies, so many uh, individuals who are in that higher education, civil rights, labor, uh, diversity and equity and inclusion partners, uh, all here today to center one of the most important challenges in higher education, historically and right now, nationally and right here in Massachusetts. And that is access for underrepresented students, black students, Latino students, LGBTQ plus students, and students with disabilities. Uh, I want to name, uh, well first thank uh, the mayor for the introduction, uh, thank Superintendent Zaporowski for hosting us today along with uh, Principal Jen Dreisick, your students are amazing. I uh, also want to uh, acknowledge all of my esteemed colleagues in the legislature uh, who are standing here, and one who I see seated uh, right there uh, next to Max, uh, for your incredible partnership uh, in this work. I see people uh, in as much as I would say uh, our gathering here uh, today marks an important milestone, I would stop short of calling this a celebration. It is a call to action with a blueprint of the path forward. In the summer of 2023, when the Supreme Court decided to depart from decades of settled law, severely curtailing race consciousness in the admissions process, effectively banning affirmative action in college admissions, we proclaimed that Massachusetts was going to remain welcoming and inclusive of all students. Now let's start with the empirical reality, right? Because my students, my uh, own children, say we won't keep it 100 this morning. Uh, this fall, we are just starting to see the impact of that Supreme Court decision, with some colleges and universities across the nation showing significant declines in students of color, and, to be frank, some right here in Massachusetts. But the Supreme Court uh, decision did not and will not deter us. We remain unshaken and our values and efforts focused on safeguarding equitable access to higher education. We are not going back. Now, uh, I feel like I'm amongst family here uh, this morning and can say comfortably that highlighting today's work uh, and this gathering, it, it carries for me a personal significance. My family's history, uh, the fight that my mother engaged on behalf of my older brother Timmy and me to ensure that we had a path to our K-12 experience on route to higher education, the various barriers that we overcame. It's not hyperbole, hyperbole to say that my standing right here today as your Secretary of Education was anything but inevitable. And right now, right here, it's our turn, our duty to put a stake in the ground to make a difference. The fight for justice and equity is neither short nor linear. In 1978, when the Supreme Court took up the issue of racial admissions, Justice uh, Powell highlighted that the attainment of a diverse student body is a compelling and constitutionally permissible goal for an institution of higher education. 
And more recently, when Justice Sotomayor dissented in the summer of 2023, she stated that the court long ago concluded that the guarantee of racial equality can be enforced through race consciousness means in a society that is not and has never been colorblind. Race has always mattered and continues to matter. She stated that uh, hard truth that ignoring race will not equalize society, that it's a society that is racially unequal. What is true or what was true in the 1860s and again in 1954 is true today. Equality requires the acknowledgement of inequality. With this historical context in mind, Healy Driscoll administration formed an advisory council for the advancement of representation in higher education, a nation-leading effort to tackle these persistent challenges and inequities with the underlying belief that every student, every student, given the resources and supports, can matriculate and thrive in higher education. We know that, uh, how critical a ticket to higher education uh, can be. As I used to tell my students when I was a high school history teacher some time ago, perhaps the most important element of education attainment is to establish control over your own life. That can mean pursuit of a career of your choice and interests, engaging in activities and initiatives that are important to you and your community, and actively participating in our democracy. This council brought together uh, by many of you who are here today, and thank you for joining us uh, today and for your work over the past year. This council uh, uh, worked together over the past year to craft strategies within the law that allow schools to maintain a representative student body so students, colleges, and the greater society can continue to benefit from the invaluable perspectives and experiences of students of color, LBGTQ plus students, and other students historically underrepresented. To be clear, the whole of society benefits when the highest pursuits of knowledge are enriched by the multitude of backgrounds and worldviews that come with a representative student body. Through the leadership of this administration and our partners in the legislature, we've already made some transformational changes and advancement over the past two years doubling student financial aid, making community college tuition and tuition and fee-free for students 25 years and older, first and now, regardless of your age, making four-year public universities free for low-income students and cutting costs in half for middle-income students, expanding access to state financial aid for undocumented students, expanding early college programs, and I want to note that in Massachusetts, 12th grade early college participants are majority black and Latino and evenly split between low income and non low income students. This year we expect that program to grow to more than 10,000 students. We also expanded AP access, advanced placement course access, eliminating exam fees for low income students and reaching more and black, more black and Latino students. Massachusetts, I want to name, continues to rank first in the nation for the percentage of Bryce, uh, graduating high school seniors who score three or higher on those assessments. We've made progress. Also, in partnership with Attorney General Campbell, we also released uh, guidance to schools in the wake of the Supreme Court decision outlining how institutions uh, can advance educational goals by using a holistic view, review of admissions, Considering factors such as cultural competencies, income level, first generation to attend college, neighborhood or community circumstances, the impact of an applicant's experiences on their academic achievement and perspectives that they would bring to that school environment. And we've seen some public universities set an example for exactly how to achieve a diverse student body and commit to these ideals. UMass Amherst just admitted its most diverse class in its history, the class of 2028. But we know we still have a lot of work left to do. There are still far too many uh, and vast inequities that exist uh, and the persistence through, uh, through higher education as well as access 
to higher education. And so today, we are releasing actions and recommendations from the work on the council on how to reduce and close those gaps and ensure that our institutions of higher education are diverse and inclusive. Commissioner Ortega, uh, who I'll invite up here in just a moment, uh, will go into more details on the specifics of those actions, but I want to highlight the main areas that we will continue to deepen in our efforts in partnership with all of you. We will increase exposure and access to higher ed uh, for K-12 students so that they have consistent and equal access to the information, the tools, the guidance, and the resources that they need to pursue any type of post-secondary opportunity. We will enhance adult learners' access to, to the guidance and resources they need to pursue the multitude, multitude of educational and career opportunities, including enrolling or re-enrolling in college and making seamless career transitions. In partnership with uh, institutions of higher ed, we will help them implement innovative recruitment and admissions and enrollment policies such as direct admissions or guaranteed admissions for students graduating in the top 10% of their high school class. We will enhance state support and institutional capacity to enable students and adult learners to pursue multiple post-secondary pathways and successfully achieve their goals without being impeded by financial concerns. And we will increase efforts focused on persistence and completion for historically underserved and underrepresented students in higher ed. Massachusetts was the home of the first public school and the first university. We have a long history of educational excellence and will continue to lead the way in making sure that our schools reflect our communities and our values. Our students deserve nothing less. And with that, I will turn to Commissioner Ortega to do a little bit of a deeper dive on our recommendations. so many stakeholders in this room, too many to thank individually, but I want all of you to know how grateful we are that you would come here and join us for this occasion. I do think there are some students in the room as well. Am I right? Can you raise your hand if you're in there? Good. Welcome students. I want to call your attention to some stakeholders that you should be mindful of. If you count three rows up dead center are some leaders of some of our institutions of higher education here in, in Massachusetts for the community colleges, make your case to them about how you want to attend their institutions. They would be glad to have you on their campus. And then right after me will be president of Westfield State as well. Make your case to be able to uh, gain admissions to those institutions. We come here uh, to really unpack some things of work done by the advisory or the A-Care group. This is, and I don't want to misrepresent the acronym, this is the Advisory Council for the Advancement of Representation in Education, A-Care that we've been calling. 60 members of this group representing almost 100 different uh, organizations and stakeholders around Massachusetts who came together under the governor's call to action to do something to make sure we continue to uh, advocate for equitable opportunities for all our learners in Massachusetts. So thank you for the work that you did. Today is about being able to highlight some of the things that I've done there. I want to start with some things that are just a full disclosure of some opportunities that I've had in my career. This is not the first time I've come before a group or even the second time to talk about the needs to push back on scrutiny that's been given to our admissions practices at our college and universities. The first time was when I arrived at the University of Michigan when they were taking on the challenges of pushing for equitable admissions practices. The second time was when we saw that same thing happen again in Texas not too long ago where we pushed back and defended. And each one of those times, I did the same thing that I'm doing today, is that I stood before the people and said, the Supreme Court does not admit students into our colleges and universities, institutions do. Which means we've got the power and the opportunity to put in place practices that make sure that we continue to advocate for equitable admission practices to make sure that all historically underrepresented students are given access to our institutions of higher education. And this is what today is about. How is we as a state going to continue to advocate and defend the ability for our institutions to continue to admit students 
that deserve and have everybody and every opportunity to be uh, to receive an equitable, high quality provision of learning at our colleges and universities. We are now getting ready to release a report that's going to highlight some key areas of recommendation that we really want our institutions to, to act on. These five policy areas fall in this particular area. The first is we want to increase K-12 student exposure and access to higher education, a very important element that you'll see highlighted in the report that we're getting ready to release. We want to make sure that we re-engage our adult learners growing population of students that are now becoming the traditional students enrolled in our college campuses. We want to embrace innovative recruitment and admissions policies as well. We want to increase financial aid. In fact, I should say we want to continue to increase financial aid and make college affordable for all our students. And we want to support persistence and degree completion. These are the five key areas that are going to be highlighted in the report. And I want to drill down into a few of them because I think they're really important. And so I'll highlight just a few. In an effort to increase access and truly make college a reality for all, we're going to re recommend that we have, that we greater embrace the MyCap college planning tool used by all students as young as sixth grade, and make sure they have an opportunity in those folders to do things like not just do post-secondary planning, but phase in even uh, college affordability strategies that include completion of the FAFSA application as an element of the high school programs. This way we have more students fill out the one essential item that's key to accessing all our financial aid programs. And by doing so, they'll be able to go to college for free. Our free community college program is accessed by filling out the FAFSA form, along with other programs that we have, like Mass Grant Plus, that like, helps make uh, college free for students who meet the need requirements as well. We want to have greater access to SAT and ACT preparation as well, and services that allow people to do things like college level advanced placement college courses as well for the money cap. I'm sure the secretary who spoke before me will attest that our youngest students want to get to college, and we must show them what that pathway is going to be. While the college journey should start in middle school, it's also never too late for any of our learners to begin to re-engage with their colleges and universities. So we must re-engage the adult learners, which is the second item that I want to drill down, including the 700,000 adults in Massachusetts with some college, no credential, that we recommend also be targeted by the recommendations coming for this report. Some of the strategies there include better usage of prior learning assessment so that outside of college, they can get credit for courses that they've done and even go as far as thinking about what the on-the-job college uh, credit can be given as well. We want to increase the availability of paid work-based learning opportunities as well. We know that if you have experiential learning, sometimes even in the form of internships, it increases the likelihood of you being able to uh, get hired and move and have career advancement as well. As we strengthen the pipelines to college, we must also look at our admissions, and we have some recommendations in this area as well. We want to incentivize private and public institutions of higher education to implement holistic admissions practices and review processes as well, targeting recruitment efforts aimed at attracting a more diverse pool of students and applicants to our institutions, particularly our historically underrepresented. We want to establish, as a recommendation in this report as well, establish admissions partnerships that proactively go after our students and then provide them admissions by looking at what we could do to promote admissions criteria as well, such as ACT scores, high school equivalency exams, and others. We also want to think about dual admissions programs into our colleges and universities, even think about what a direct admissions program can do for our students if we think about access to our college and we need to make sure that we think about how can we guarantee admission to all our students who are interested in going to college, whether it's a two-year or four-year in Massachusetts as well. We need to put policies in place that are already effective in other states here in Massachusetts. And once a student is admitted into college, they must also be able to afford it. And we need to make sure that college is more affordable for everyone. So included in this report are recommendations that would allow us to allocate financial aid and incentivize it in ways that facilitate not just part-time enrollment, but full-time enrollment for all our students. We need to increase the proportion 
of need-based aid versus that which is not based on economic need. And we need to simplify, we really need to simplify the different types of current financial aid programs that currently exist in Massachusetts as well to make these programs more accessible to the students in Massachusetts who are interested in going to college. And finally, to boost certificate and degree attainment in a targeted way, we suggest the following recommendations in the report. We need to incentivize the provision of a comprehensive array of research and evidence-based wraparound service to all our students. This includes helping students with the life needs that tend to get in the way of their ability to persist. I urge all of you in this room to read the full report. I'm proud that while other states are shying away from talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion, that Massachusetts has stood up and stand up for the rights of all our students who access our institutions. Thank you for listening. State, President Thompson to the state. Good afternoon, and thank you, Commissioner Ortega. I would like to thank Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Education Secretary Tutwiler, Higher Education Commissioner Ortega, and the entire, the entire ACARE Council for working to craft this report that will lead to more opportunities for all students to have the ability to pursue their hopes and their dreams. The recent action this administration has taken related to accessibility in education underscores a commitment, underscores a commitment to creating access to those who want to stay in Massachusetts, build businesses, support our economy, and strengthen their families. In theory and action, I share the administration's obligations to, to ensure a diverse, inclusive, and equitable learning environment that contributes to the growth of our communities. Reaching into underserved communities while making education affordable and streamlining educational pathways are key elements to unlocking the potential of any and all individuals who aspire to become the next leaders of our communities. We are committed to strengthening our partnerships that develop efficiencies within the education system and creating opportunities for those who have been historically excluded from participating in higher education. The recommendations from the Advisory Council to advance representation in education are a significant step in higher education's ability to close the equity gap in the Commonwealth. As a leader in higher education, I am encouraged and motivated to make these recommendations become reality. And I just want to acknowledge my higher education colleagues who have worked very well with me in developing smooth pathways to higher education. So thank you. For those who don't, don't know me, my name is Harry Dumay, and I'm the president of Elms College. Secretary Tatuara, Commissioner Ortega, elected representatives and elected officials, members of the higher education um, sector that are here with me, um, everyone who is here, and I, uh, Commissioner, I see some future health students. It is a, an honor and a privilege for me to be here um, to bring greetings on behalf of the students, faculty, staff, and trustees of Elms College, and um, to thank um, Secretary Tortweiler and the administration for uh, providing me and inviting me and providing me an opportunity to participate in the Council for the Advancement of Representation in higher education. 
Um, the secretary charged us um, in the aftermath of the Supreme Court decision to think about how to make sure that Massachusetts remain at the forefront of, of advancing access within the law. Um, and it was refreshing to participate in conversations with um, several members of the higher education sector um, to ensure that Massachusetts remains at the forefront of access. We certainly, uh, from Elms College, applaud the efforts of the administration and um, everything that the administration has done to increase and expand access to higher education in the Commonwealth. Um, American higher education is the envy of the world. Um, experts recognize that much of the growth in the economy of, of the United States can be attributed to the <coughs> superior workforce development that happens in our colleges and universities and in the research that happens in higher education laboratories. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts remains at the forefront of American higher education, not only because of the elite institutions which are um, housed in the Commonwealth, but also because of the diversity of institutions that are um, in higher education, a diversity that um, I have had the opportunity to witness as a commissioner for the a commission for um, the, the New England Commission for Higher Education, and my colleague Alan Kennedy is also a member, has been a member of the New England Commission for Higher Education. So we see the beauty of the Commonwealth of, higher, of Massachusetts higher education in, uh, sector because of the diversity in the sector and the, this effort from the um, council aims to continue to ensure that access, the widespread access to higher education remains at the forefront of what makes the Commonwealth of Massachusetts uh, a leading, a leader in American higher education. Elms College is pleased to play our role in that effort to expand access to higher education. And in fact, it was refreshing to read the, to preview the report uh, that the council is, is putting forward and to see that Elms College's student mirror more some of our community college partners, the composition of Elms College student mirrored the composition of our, our community college partners more than some of the um, usual, what is usually understood for the private institutions. So in the uh, entering class for the fall freshmen, 51.4% of our students identify as a BIPOC students. 50% um, of our students identify as first generation students. And 44% of our students identify as fellow eligible. Now this is personal to me as well, because as a first generation um, college student, extending access um, to all students is something that is very important to me. So we are very, very pleased to see, um, to have participated in, the, in this effort and to, to see the continued effort of the, the um, Hilly Driscoll administration and the leadership of um, Secretary Totweiler and Com Commissioner Ortega to continue this effort to, to expand access. And we, we are also pleased to see in the report that the efforts will be expanding not just to public higher education, but also to include efforts with private higher education so that all we can provide that, um, that, that access to education to all of our students. So we, 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 we applaud of the administration for this wonderful um, report, for this wonderful effort, and we stand ready to work with the administration to expand access to all of our students. And uh, Femi stole, stole so. <laughs> Director at USYR. 
as a nonprofit organization providing financial aid advising, training, guidance counselors on financial aid, and providing resources for students on how to afford college, we know firsthand the importance of facilitating access to post-secondary education. I'm proud to be here this morning as an advocate of accessible and affordable higher education. For longer than I care to admit, I've stood before crowds like this one to talk about things like disinvestment in public higher education and declining enrollment. So it is an honor to be here this morning to talk about our reverse in those trends. Over the past few years, the Healy Driscoll administration and our state legislature have worked diligently to pour additional resources into our state financial aid system, strengthening existing programs and developing and implementing new ones. Our Commonwealth has committed resources not only to helping students enroll in college, but to help students succeed and persist to graduation. The ACARE report released this morning highlights the Commonwealth's commitment to establishing a community of practice composed of representatives from community-based organizations, nonprofit organizations, and educators in order to enhance alignment and collaboration, identify gaps in services, and create tools to provide information to students, families, and educators. The report further calls out collaborating with CPO partners around college entrance exam preparation and access, college and career advising, and for the provision of comprehensive student service supports for current college students, and particularly those servicing higher proportions of historically underrepresented students. As organizations on the ground, we understand the importance of clear, timely, and accessible information, and we look forward to partnering with the Commonwealth to maintain the current uh, momentum to better serve our students. We are thankful to the Healy Driscoll Administration for its commitment to the Commonwealth students, and we stand ready to join you in moving this work forward. Thank you. So uh, I want to, uh, again, thank everyone for, for joining us uh, here this, this morning slash afternoon. I think it's after 12 in the afternoon now. Uh, and just go back to something I said uh, in the beginning, uh, which is this is the beginning. Right? This is a call to action, and now we have a blueprint for the work. And it is going to take the entire ecosystem, inclusive of higher education, its leaders, its incredible teachers and staff, our, our robust and incredible uh, leaders in the legislature, uh, the executive branch, uh, all of the incredible community-based organizations and organizations that lead into this work to make what we've identified as the path forward come to life. Uh, and I know that that commitment is there and I look forward to the next steps. Thank you all for being here today.